Hey guys, it's Cindy here. Guys, today's video is about Peter Spencer, who lost his life in a very terrible way. Guys, trigger warning, the story is horrible. Some TikTokers shared the story which you all are gonna listen, you all are gonna like hear the full story. Guys, this is so bad. I mean, how can people be this wicked how can people be this mean how can people be this cruel guys oh my god tiktok i need your help to get justice for 29 year old peter spencer who was murdered by five white men in venango county pennsylvania Peter, who was a father, Pittsburgh resident, Jamaican immigrant, asked his pregnant fiance to drop him off at a cabin in the woods where he was supposed to meet up with five white men to go on a hunting trip. When she dropped him off, Peter and instructed her to pick him up later that evening. However, a few hours after Peter's fiance dropped him off, she received a text message telling her that he was going to spend the night, something that was totally out of character for Peter. His fiance tried to call him, but she got no answer. And hours later, his mother tried to call as well, but it went straight to voicemail. At 2.30 a.m., Peter's lifeless body was found on Carl's Road in Rockland Township, Pennsylvania. He had been shot nine times. Out of the gunshots Peter received, two were found in his butt, six were in his torso, and one was straight in his mouth. Although clearly a hate crime, the five white men have all claimed self-defense, and the Venango County Sheriff's Department has refused to charge anyone with a crime. Demand justice, boo! So I haven't made a video like this in a long time, but this needs to be talked about because I haven't seen it anywhere except on Instagram. On December 11th, Peter Spencer was invited through Snapchat to a co-worker's cabin in rural Vendigo County, Pennsylvania. It's very, it's very close to Grove City, if you guys know where that is. And he was a melanated individual. He was the only melanated individual there who ended up dead. Here's what we know. Peter and his pregnant fiance had agreed that he, she was going to pick him up later in the evening. She dropped him off at 2.30 p.m. Immediately after she drove away, she received a text saying that he was going to stay the night, which was very out of character for him. His text was out of character as well. When she called him, he never answered. She proceeded to leave still his mother called around 6 p.m and her call went straight to voicemail around 2 30 a.m the police claims a dispatch call came in saying that sh shots occurred around during an altercation state troopers came to peter's house around 6 a.m to let his mother know that he had been shot and killed the cabin is about two hours away so his pregnant fiance didn't get back up until 9 a.m the state trooper informed her that the police and forensics team had just gotten there at 9 a.m. The man that shot him claimed that they were intimidated by Pete and said that they had to shoot him in self-defense. Autopsy reports that he was shot nine times, twice in the butt, six in the torso, and one directly into the mouth. The butt shots suggest that he was running away, especially because his body was found in the driveway a sizable distance from the cabin. Okay, so then it also it also says that the shots were close enough that you could see burn marks from the barrel, also just suggesting that his body would have been turned over. The last shot was close range, directly in the mouth. Uh, they won't release the ballistics report, but the coroner kept saying they, suggesting there were multiple bullets from multiple different guns. How is it self-defense if the person is running away? How are you so intimidated that you felt comfortable getting close enough range to put the barrel to his chest and then directly in his mouth? Would you shoot someone in the mouth in self-defense? Would you require multiple people shooting at someone who is just intimidating? The suspect also invited him to the cabin via Snapchat, which is also a messaging service that disposes of the chats after 24 hours. Hmm. Think about that. We also believe they may have taken his phone in the in the seconds that he got there and forced him to text his fiance he wasn't coming home that night. He never answered after 2.30 p.m. daytime. This is Peter Spencer. Say his name. My father was killed under suspicious circumstances and his family and community are demanding answers. December 11th of this year, Peter Spencer was dropped off at a remote cabin by his pregnant fiance to camp with five white men. Peter told his wife to pick him up that evening. After she left, she received a text stating that he was going to stay the night. This text was out of character, and when she tried to call him, Peter didn't answer. Peter's mother called hours later, and it went straight to voicemail. 2.30 a.m., a shooting at the cabin was reported. Peter's fiancé drove two hours to the cabin and arrived at 9 a.m. Police and forensics team had just arrived. That's a six-hour-plus gap between the 911 call and police arriving on the scene. 
29-year-old Peter Spencer was shot nine times, twice in the butt, six in the torso, and once directly into the mouth. The men who shot him are claiming self-defense. Multiple guns were found at the scene. This happened weeks ago and no charges have been filed. Police are refusing to give any information to Peter's family. All right, we're going to talk about Peter Spencer. If you guys haven't heard about Peter Spencer, let me fill you in. And Spencer, who was killed recently, was a Jamaican immigrant living in Pennsylvania. So the story is that Spencer's wife dropped him off to go hunting with a co-worker and some other people. Now, from what I take from the article, it states that trips like this had happened before, but the fiancé did feel a little uncomfortable because they took him directly into the woods and not into the mother's house this time. Now, when she went to go pick him up less than 24 hours later, he was dead. Peter Spencer was shot nine times, six times in the chest, twice in the buttocks, and one in the neck. Now, a 25-year-old man was brought into custody for questioning, but he was later released, and now that man is claiming self-defense. Now, I don't know why the other hunting party wasn't brought in for questioning as well, but this is an ongoing investigation, so we'll see what happens. They are stating that this could possibly be a hate crime, and if that is the case, that is troublesome. Now, I'm going to keep my eye on this case because it is very odd and a bit unexplainable, but hopefully the investigation can explain exactly what happened.